In the 1st century AD, the Roman Empire and Han China were the heavyweights of their respective regions, and were the two superpowers of the time. So do these two superpowers ever interact with each other? 2000 years ago, as the calendars began to shift from BC to AD, each edge of the Eurasian landmass was dominated by its own superpower. Encircling the Mediterranean Sea in the west was the Roman Empire, and in East Asia was the Han Dynasty of China. Now, Rome and China most certainly knew of each other's existence, but the way the two interacted was very indirectly. Whenever the subject was brought up, Rome would refer to the other region as Serica for the Land of Silk, or Sinai referring to the Qin Dynasty, and China called the other region Da Qin, as if thinking of Rome as the other China at the other edge of the world. The two sides did send ambassadors to each other on very rare occasions, but the idea of the other two interacting was easier said than done. The thing to understand about Roman China is that Eurasia is big, and not just more than 10 hour flights big. I mean so big that after crossing deserts, climbing mountains, and encountering civilizations that you don't recognize, you realize you've only barely made it to Western India. The main way the two sides of the supercontinent interacted was through the Silk Road, which was a very indirect trade network that spanned most of Asia from Anatolia to China, both by land and sea. This network was, if we use communication as our analogy, more like a game of telephone than a direct call, since most merchants would travel parts of the route and trade goods that were more likely to just end up on the other end. Very few ever traveled across the whole network. The biggest roadblock to sign Roman relations though, aside from the road being super long and also not being that much of a road, were the empires in between them, notably Persia, which Rome was a long time rival with no matter which form they took at the time. China was also more isolationist throughout some periods of its history, and especially a thousand years after the time period we're talking about, became sort of the holy grail of trade for European kingdoms. As mentioned in last week's video, the key thing to understanding relations between medieval Europe and China was that China had everything Europe wanted, and Europe had nothing China wanted. This wasn't as true with ancient Rome, as the West had many things that China did want at the time, like cotton and Roman glassware. Additionally, Rome imported so much silk from China that many senators repeatedly and unsuccessfully tried to ban it within the empire. Military technology like the Chinese Inventor Crossbow was also traded and spread to the other empires. In a sense, the real story of Sino-Roman relations is the story of the famous Silk Road, as it was the one thing really connecting the two sides of the supercontinent together. Eventually, when the Roman Empire actually did end, and the new Ottoman Empire mostly cut off Western Europe from the spice trade, is when things got interesting to say the least on the other side of the Atlantic. Thanks for watching this video, which can honestly be a sequel or a prequel to last week's video, linked here. It can really go either way, I guess. Either way, if you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to learn something new every Sunday.